Guys, it is an end of an era. You see, some information was recently released on Mr. Beast and a little bit less recently, Ava Chris Tyson. Said information has slowly trickled out over time until we've led up to today where everything that we really need to know has all come out and then a little bit more. So today I'm going to go over said information. I'm gonna be as unbiased as I possibly can so that I'm just presenting the information. However, I, I, I apologize if I chime in here and there with why these information points could be viewed as negatively. I'm gonna actually take my headphones off. There will be chapters in this video. So if there's something that you guys already know and you already understand it, you just kind of want to get to the, the new Discord leaks, feel free to use the chapters in the bottom of this video. Mr. Beast is no longer a channel of wholesomeness and family friendliness as we all once thought. And the people that he surrounds himself with are not to be trusted. Pretty shocking coming from a creator that I'm assuming that most of us probably watched growing up. I'm 21. Mr. Beast has been around since I was like le less than 10. If you don't watch Mr. Beast videos, he's the rich challenge YouTuber that gives his money away. He heals the blind. He heals the, the deaf. He plants trees. He, he cleans up oceans. He's done a lot of work for the world and the people of the world. A lot of people compare him to Jesus because of how many good things he does. Um, and I think that's pretty funny. YouTube Jesus, Jimmy, he's done a lot of good on YouTube. He also does these weird challenge videos, like staying underground for over 32 hours, go going to a Squid Games thing, like he called them Beast Games, I think. Okay, just wanted to pop in here real quick and say that I did get that last bit of information wrong. The Beast Games is something that Mr. Beast is creating as a series for Netflix. There are some allegations of mistreatment, uh, like people not getting medication, as well as the allegations that prize money isn't actually all going to actual contestants, but instead maybe friends and family are getting it and even employees of Mr. Beast. There's been some evidence posted of it, so if you guys would like me to record some more content Content on Mr. Beast about it, please leave me a comment below um, and like this video. I'll let uh, the actual me get back to it. I think I've got a little dirt smudge on the screen. Let me get that real quick. This guy does a lot of stuff like that. And because he has a lot of money, he gives away a lot of it. Or so we thought. We'll get into that later. One of the people on Mr. Beast's channel that is a frequent visitor is a now a woman by the name Ava Chris Tyson, but in previous videos you would have seen them before they transitioned as just Chris Tyson. Ava, Chris, whatever you want to call them, they have been under some recent fire. I'd say about a couple months ago they came out as trans and the internet had a big uproar about that. Um, and in general, it came out pretty positive. We came out the other side of that with more people supporting Ava than belittling her for her experiences. And um, a lot of people were in fact happy that Ava came out um, and very supportive. More, there was a majority of support rather than a majority of hate as we've seen in the past with other creators. And other regular people coming out, we've seen outrage from the public. It's good to see a positive change in the online sphere. A month or two later, about a month ago, a channel by the name of Prism42 drops an hour long video. Prism42 talks about how Chris Tyson talked inappropriately to a 13 year old at the time whose name is Lava. In general, um, they don't seem to really want to be talked a lot about. However, it is important, especially when Chris is the one that's doing these bad things. Now, how did Ava and Lava here meet? Lava had won a Mr. Beast giveaway for a karambit knife and Ava, Chris at the time, had the connections for said knife and the communications and so he got the knife, got Mr. Beast to sign it and then sent it to Lava. Since then, Chris made a tweet and said that he wanted to get back into streaming. Lava then commented and said, yes, please do another stream. Chris responded weirdly with, thanks dad, you wanna moderate it? And Lava replies that he'd love to. Kinda weird calling a person that you know at the time is 13, dad. <laughs> Whatever. We'll let it go, maybe. 
Maybe just like, you know, an inside joke. Lava then later makes a tweet in reply to one of Chris's videos that he posts on Twitter, a little 38 second clip. I think maybe it was uh, his fiance in the video. And Lava says, Chris, does she know about your hentai addiction? What? That's no, no bueno, no bueno. You know that he watches porn and that he's heavily addicted to it. What the freak is going on in the Twitch and Discord moderations, brother? What's going on? Later on, Chris makes another tweet, says that if he gets one more goal on, pre on Patreon, he'll release his nudes, which at the time was, I guess, pretty normal. Like. Patreon was, used to be like OnlyFans pretty much. Like Patreon used to be the place where people would pay for your, your sexually explicit um, photos. A lot of people at the time, like a lot of YouTubers, especially female YouTubers, who are looking to get a little extra money, a little extra clout, would start posting their nudes on the platform. Lava then <laughs> pledges to his Patreon and shows his pledge. Chris then responds to Lava showing that he donated by saying, but not five dollars. Pathetic. JK, love you, kissy face. And Lava says, wait till my Twitch revenue comes in, winky face. Huh? And then Lava says, check again, tagging Chris. And Chris says, lol, I just saw, hold up. I got you, then calls him dad again. And then he says, I just posted some fire nudes for you. Please no share. Dude, you know this guy is like 14, 13, 14 years old. <laughs> what are you doing? Dude, okay, I'm never posting my naked body on the internet, right? At least not for minors to see. I swear to God, if I find out any of you are under the age of 18 and you're just even, and you're even looking at my face right now listen if you're under 18 you can watch my videos okay if you're all right with a little a little bit of censorship here and there cool whatever i don't give a f but if you try to interact with me at all i'm gonna kill you i'm gonna find you and i'm going to destroy you do not talk to me I don't really like to talk to people who are under the age of 18. Occasionally I'll go hang out in my server, which is a 16 and up. Not because we post NSFW there or anything, but because we just want to have a good time and we don't want to make anybody uncomfortable. I swear a lot in there, but I don't make sex jokes or anything like that. We just make jokes, right? You could join my Discord server and you wouldn't find anything to expose me for. I'm pretty I'm pretty confident in that. I've never sent anything in my Discord server that could get me in trouble. I've never done that like at all. <laughs> like that's not hard to not do, right? I feel like it's pretty easy to just in general be a, a safe internet user. At least if you're a Mudahar viewer like me. <laughs> Don't talk to minors in any way, shape, or form, ever. Period. That's it. But here we see Chris sharing nudes with minors. Here's some more just edgy jokes. Then we get to the part where Chris Tyson and Carl take a picture with this lava kid. And this was taken during a trip in which lava went to go visit the Mr. Beast group because I think he ended up working for him. I think he was an editor. So this was a planned trip that he, that lava went on with his family. Lava came out later on and said that these allegations of, of Chris grooming lava were incorrect and if somebody who is saying that they have not been assaulted then i can't say that they've been assaulted but i can still however say that these are inappropriate actions taken by chris uh he posts these he posts a a screenshot of some youtube videos that he says are lies about Lava's story and that Ava didn't do anything wrong that they only made a few negative edgy jokes and that Lava was never exploited or taken advantage of. It's funny though because the videos that that Lava posts a screenshot of actually don't talk about Lava at all. But Prism42 posts that the rest of the video after these this is him just giving his opinion giving what he talked about in a later video he talks about how he tried to get multiple other people to talk about this situation and the evidence that he has. Um, however, he's kind of weird. Hard miss on this. He tried to get people like Oompaville to talk about it and people people with a, a following, people who have um, re have done commentary before. But he also goes after, after people like 
He goes to people like EDP. He gets EDP to talk about it. And then he tries, he stalks, by the way. Then he goes on to stalk Chris Chan. Chris Chan. He tried to get Chris Chan to talk about this information. They scoured North Carolina and ended up just making it to a home for mentally challenged individuals. What? You guys tried stalking Chris Chan to cover the stuff that you could have talked about a year ago? By the way, they got this information a year ago. Prison got all the information he's talking about a year ago. He waited for a year to let this story come out. And he wanted it to come out from somebody else other than him. I'm letting you guys know that because I think it's fishy and I think it says a little bit about Prism, but that's a side note. A little bit after this, about two weeks ago, a channel by the name of Adrox drops this video. This video will make you hate Chris Tyson. And to fully understand this one, we have to go into a little bit of an internet character by the name of Shadman. Look at him and tell me there's a god. Now, Shadman. Shadman is an artist on YouTube. He's been around for a while, I think like 2010. He's a controversial internet figure for the most part. Has been known to just draw NSFW, but NSFW of underaged <laughs> girls. So really, really bad NSFW, like illegal NSFW. He's an Ill illegal artist, pretty much. He does a lot of illegal drawings of little girls. One notable one, just to, just to give you an idea of how up this guy is a notable piece is of one that he drew of keemstar's seven-year-old daughter at the time giving Tr donald trump a blowjob really really nasty it makes me like actually upset to say those words but it doesn't change the fact that he did it now this guy's been doing this for a long time he's been making all the art for a while now and adrox covers some old deleted tweets of chris um, Chadman had, uh, made a picture, he drew a, a little girl, um, who wore a, please be patient, I have autism hat, had a gun in her mouth, a little fidget spinner on her ear, and then a tattoo on her leg that said BBC. Now what does this picture have to do with Ava? Well, Ava tweeted under a Mr. Beast tweet, this is coming from the guy who owns a shad based drawing and has it as a centerpiece in his living room. People at the time thought this was just like an edgy joke or something, right? Then we see a picture that Chris tweeted um, showing the artwork, adding some fidget spinners on it, and then showing it up on, on the wall. And the tweet said, bonus fidget spinners to really throw in some extra autism, and then tags Shadman. Then in a Mr. Beast video from six years ago, called tipping pizza delivery guy $10,000. People saw in this video that picture of the girl with the autism had the gun in her mouth up on the wall in Chris's house with Mr. Beast looking at it. It's like he's Mr. Beast, he's the image. He's literally staring at it in the video. So this just, you know, proves that Chris does have this art in his room. He's just got it up in his wall. Here's some more tweets of Chris talking about Shadman and asking him for some art. Talking about, here's one, here's some talking about Beast Boy. Here's one where he tags Shadman. Chris replying to a tweet about Caillou saying, help, I need an adult, just in general with his history of liking Shadman, especially having Shadman tagged in the tweet definitely not freaking good. Here's one that he tweeted underneath a Gravity Falls picture, Mabel and Dipper. That's nice for my eyes to see. That's sarcasm. Um, there's some of Chris replying under pictures of Violet from The Incredibles saying, Loki, she cute. Not good. Not good. Good. There's a clip from one of Chris's old streams where they accidentally open up Shadman's website on stream. Luckily for him, it didn't have anything NSFW on the website for the day. But then he tweeted out that clip and said, shout out to tags Shadman for having safe for work drawings today. Accidentally pulled up his website on stream. And then one of the last kind of like big um, things here 
is this picture of an anime character. Now this anime has a, a bit of a time skip in it that shows this character here in this photo, they are 14 and later on in the anime, it shows them uh, overage, right? So this is them, their character underage though. What does Chris reply to this tweet with? Please Shad, please. What the f else would that mean other than please draw this character, this underage character, like, what in the actual hell? Oh, I got it f***ed up. I'm so sorry. That character in that image is actually 10 and their older version is only 17. Whoa, wait, both of the characters' ages are set, are underage. I had that totally wrong, guys. No, no, this character is actually, the older version of the character is only 17. And in that one, she's 10. That's even worse. Oh. Look, that's even worse. Wow, we're learning something together, guys. Yippee! Here's him straight up just saying that he is a Nothing gets my knob cranking. Nothing turns my knob, my doorknob, like cranking like some <laughs> Right, guys? This stuff comes out, and now, two weeks ago, now people are starting to get heated. As more people start to become aware of the situation, uh, a week ago, Lava makes this tweet about how they don't want to be talked about. But the same day, Drama Alert shows an old Chris Tyson video where he just shared revenge porn pics with his audience of Jeanette McCurdy. An, uh, an actress from iCarly. Oh, you know, I'll just play this clip for you. Um, the link's in the description if you want to see him. I mean, I'm not endorsing people to go look at somebody else's private business, but I know that, uh, you know, people might want to see him, so there, it's there. <laughs> oh my God. I don't want to share revenge porn. I don't want to be known as the guy who shares revenge porn, but here's some revenge porn. I don't endorse that. Here you go. <laughs> Over the week, people are a little bit you know, a little bit on edge because what does this mean about Mr. Beast? Did Mr. Beast know about any of this, huh? There's no proof or evidence of it. Just, you know, a bunch of people saying some sh And then the other day uh, during this week, Dog Pack 404 um, releases a video called I Worked For Mr. Beast and He's A Fraud. Um, I highly encourage you guys to just go watch the video. But to summarize it, he goes over a ton of evidence that just proves that most of Mr. Beast's videos are fake and that he's been lying about a lot of things for a long time. And so I actually did record a video yesterday where I was talking about, well, if Mr. Beast is lying about these things, what what's to say that he wouldn't lie about something bigger that could ruin his channel, right? If these are little things that frankly, nobody gives a shit about if your video is fake or not, it's obvious that you're in kid entertainment right now. This is how you make all the money that you do. If you're willing to lie about such small things about that, who's to say you wouldn't lie about knowing about this Chris stuff. We did have a statement from Ava Chris Tyson that said, I would like to apologize for any of my past behavior or comments if I hurt or offended anyone. It was not my intent. Seeing recent events, we've mutually decided it's best that I permanently step away from all things Mr. Beast and social media to focus on my family and mental health. Does this remind you of anybody? Anybody who might wear red and sunglasses? <laughs> Because later on, Mr. B says this. Over the last few days, I've become aware of the serious allegations of Ava Tyson's behavior online, and I am disgusted and opposed to such unacceptable acts. I have been focused on hiring an independent third party to conduct a thorough investigation to ensure I have all the facts. That said, I have seen enough online and taken an immediate action to remove Ava from the company, my channel, and any association with Mr. Beast. I do not condone or support any of the inappropriate actions. I will allow the independent investigators the necessary time to conduct a comprehensive investigation and will take any further actions based on their findings. What a shitty apology too. They weren't actually apologizing for anything that they did. They were just saying sorry that they got caught. And then Mr. Beast fires them. So they're probably sorry that they got fired too. Everybody at the time was pretty satisfied with um, this response. Like, Nobody was really upset that he responded in this way. Oh, but then, uh-oh. Guys, I have a whole 
folder of screenshots from the drama alert live stream that was leaking Chris Tyson's Discord server messages where he had posted his nudes and had also in said server said that he was the oldest one there at 21 years old. He knew everybody's ages and he posted himself naked to children and implications of Mr. Beast having his own channel within the Discord server. I'm Aaron asks, what's the gay count room? Chris, the meme god, responds, scary things, lol, just kidding, it's Jimmy chat room. Lol, Jimmy just chillin' in electric music. Chris said, haha, nah, he's chillin' with me. That shows that Mr. Beast was in this server during the time that Chris posted his new. So Mr. Beast knew! Mr. Beast even other people knew that Mr. Beast was there. Mr. Beast was asking people to teach him how to play Rust in the server. So he was active in the server at this time. Here's some weird stuff where Mr. Beast and Chris are talking about Chris's penis size and Mr. Beast posting the link to Danielle Brigoli or Bad Baby's YouTube channel who was a minor at the time. You remember, you guys remember Lava? Here's him talking to Lava about setting up a hentai bot in the server and Chris saying, I believe in a free NSFW server. If people want to catch the gay, that's fine by me. Yikes. So he's okay with a bunch of children looking at NSFW. Right under that, somebody said, I like how NSFW has more messages than general. That should give you guys a pretty good um, idea of how awful this server was for children to be in. Chris then asks if sh if gore should be allowed in the NSFW chat. Uh-oh, Chris. And then here's some of uh, the messages of them talking about uh, small girls. Even some of the kids were like, really, NSFW, this isn't good. Here's one that Chris says, you guys ever want to live a different life just to see what it's like? Sometimes I wish I was a neat lol. And this is kind of like all the evidence that we actually have on the dude. And that's more than enough to know that Chris is not uh, somebody that kids should be around, is not somebody that should have a platform on YouTube, and is not somebody who we should, I guess, trust as much as we have so far. It's really disappointing to see this, and it's really disappointing to see that Mr. Beast is also aware of it, and also know that he didn't do anything about it. I just think it shows a lot on on who Mr. Beast is, on who Ava is, and on how we need to be taking this much more seriously going forward. The things brought before us in the Ocha court today cannot be denied, and certainly it could all be faked, but I am under the impression that it isn't, and this is all very, very compelling. Who knows? I think that this might actually be the end of Mr. Beast. Really sucks, but you know, can't blame us. We really thought the guy was good because of all the good things he did. I feel like this could have been made known earlier, of course, considering Prism was sitting on the story for like a year. Moral of the story, if you've got information on somebody and it's information that the world would benefit from knowing, let, let the world know. Just let the world know. I know. You've got 2,000 subscribers. Even if you've got one subscriber, that information that you have, you can reach out to people with it and they can help you get it. But you don't need to wait on the story for a year to get it out to somebody. It sucks. Let me know what you guys think. I'm disturbed. I feel bad. And like probably a lot of you guys, I feel kind of betrayed. This isn't something that you ever really want to see come out uh, on a creator that you enjoy, especially not a creator that was super big in the trans community only a month ago and is now um, not something that trans people can look up to anymore and instead adds a lot of, you know, distrust in, in the community. So yeah, that's my thoughts. That's my opinion. I really wish this didn't happen, but the fact that it did and that the information is out now um, is good because we can now make more accurate, uh, uh, sorry, we can make more um, justified opinions on the person. I don't think people should use this against the trans community. This is not at all a trans community issue. This is a person being an awful person. It's not something that anybody should be putting on a community. You know what I mean? Like, that would just be not right. Yeah, that's all I gotta say. Guys, subscribe to the channel if you feel like you'd like to see some more videos like this in the future. I waited for a while because I really wanted to make sure that everything that had come out was solid. Um, if I see the Mr. Beast uh, investigation stuff come out and I think that it's worth 
reviewing and talking about, I'll talk about it. Or you can follow my Twitter down in the bio and I'll be responding there. I'm getting a little bit more active there. So yeah, all that being said and done, it's been good talking to you guys and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.